technically feasible for us, what would be legally feasible for us. And there is a huge variety of uh, possibilities in central bank digital currency which would have more or less revolutionary consequences. It could affect the whole financial ecosystem. It could wipe out the banking system. Do we want to do that? The academic, I would say, side, but we are very far away from a political decision on implementation. We only want to be ready. <laughs>
of paper currency. Tomorrow, if people would say we prefer plastic currency or polymer currency, we would have to issue polymer currency. And that's why we follow the technological development uh, of uh, what is required very closely in order to be able to live up to the expectations. The same goes if people would say we don't like currency anymore, which is not what we see in Europe, quite to the contrary. Uh, people continue to have a likening of cash, whatever is being written in numerous articles. So we have to uh, deliver to the request of the people. But if there would be a dislikening of cash tomorrow, then we should also be ready to offer the public uh, whatever liability to the central bank they would like uh, to have. And that is what we are presently doing. So that is quite different from uh, what I would call a privatization of issuance of currency on whether you call it crypto asset or crypto coins or whether you call it uh, stable coins or whatever. Now this being said is even in the uh, digital area, digital currency area, you have to distinguish between wholesale payment and uh, retail payment. In the wholesale area, ma which means mainly with the banks uh, or those with whom we deal mostly, our counterparties, uh, we are already up to 90% uh, fully digital. Only we don't call it that way, but all our uh, transactions are done in book and electronic book entry form. Uh, so uh, from that point of view, if we speak about digital currency in the whole bank, in the wholesale market, it applies more to who would have access to the central bank balance sheet. For the moment, it is mostly only the banks. In the future, is there a need to give access also to other entities like fintech or like uh, financial market infrastructures as some countries have done it? That is the remaining discussion uh, we are credibly, uh, presently doing. And uh, the second is uh, in retail. That is, of course, affecting the public at large. But as I said, first we have to see what is the request and what is the need of the public. Second, we have to identify what are the different possibilities of a central bank digital currencies, what are the design features which we want to pursue, uh, what, uh, how far would we like to go. If we want to stay in the pure area of payment systems, don't forget that we have already right now a solution for faster payments, uh, which is called TIPS. And uh, this is, of course, in the payment transaction, only the last stage of payment, mainly the settlement. But we have not moved to the issuance, to the front end uh, of uh, the individual payment transaction. But uh, settlement could be done with our technology already right now in uh, less than a few seconds per transactions and at a cost of less than 0 0.2 cent. This obviously is much cheaper and much faster also than any cryptocurrency is able to offer to private transactions. And uh, I have not heard anything uh, like also from uh, stablecoin uh, potential offerings. So uh, what we want to do is to separate the hype and the announcement from reality. And we are monitoring the evolution of technology. We are testing the different technological uh, products and to see what would be possible, what would be technically feasible for us, what would be legally feasible for us. And there is a huge variety of uh, possibilities in central bank digital currency which would have more or less revolutionary consequences. It could affect the whole financial ecosystem. It could wipe out the banking system. Do we want to do that? then who will issue the economy with loans? If it is not the banks who have the deposits that they transfer into loans, 
they would need to raise money somewhere else that will increase their funding costs in order to cover it would they need to take more risks and so on what is the question of the feature of anonymity that people have with uh, cash as it is present what uh, if we would directly access the clients uh, as we do it now with cash or would we limit it if we limit it is there another risk that we would have two currencies that we would issue and which would raise the question of convertibility between the two issues. So there are a lot of questions that need to be discussed, and that is what we are presently uh, drilling down to uh, increase our knowledge from the technical and uh, academic, I would say, side, but we are very far away from a political decision on implementation. We only want to be ready. Because at the end of this process, we have to make an assessment. What are we pursuing? What are the, the shape of the product we want to offer? What are the consequences uh, if we would do that? Would it not also shape all our existing monetary policy instruments uh, from how is the transmission mechanism of monetary policy to the economy affected? All these are questions which need a thorough preparation, and this is a little bit more complex than just saying you are tech-friendly, you are tech-averse, why don't you like this one, why do you prefer that one? No, we are tech-neutral, we want to stay ahead of tech. Tech has to serve our purpose, not the other way around. I completely agree with you and I think it's extremely important to consider the real business models and the problems versus what are the new technologies that we can potentially implement for the sake of implementing them. Thank you very much Mr. Mash. Thank you very much.